Welcome to this marketing show. We're excited to have Lisa Marie Garcia from Now Publishing with us. Today, we're going to chat about why every business owner and business professional needs to publish their own authentic content. Lisa, you're a master at this. Tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive right in. Well, thank you. And I have to say, I love Smarketing. Ever since I saw the name of your show, I just, Smarketing, Smarketing is such a great name. So thank, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, I'm Lisa Marie Garcia. I'm the COO of a, a team at downtown Tampa Bay called Now Publishing. We're rounding our six and a half years. I'm so happy once we passed year five, I'm like, we're not a startup anymore after we hear <laughs> year five. But uh, yeah, my background's in tech. I was an IBM engineer with IBM for a few years until I impetuously quit. And uh, it actually, we believe we were one of the first telecommunications firms, uh, professional services telecommunications firm in the country. I ran that company as CEO for 18 years. And then now here I am in publishing. Um, we, we help uh, people publish their story, specifically brand stories for the business brand, but also legacy stories which are, are just as important um, in this age of content. Awesome. Well, Lisa, you know, I was excited to talk to you today because I follow you on social media and I know you come from a tech executive background and a lot of our, a lot of our viewers, I think are wrestling with, hey, I'm a corporate executive or maybe I'm even a salesperson or I'm a marketing manager, whatever. And they may feel that if I step outside and start to strengthen my personal brand with my story, uh, you know, am I going to be in trouble with the corporation because they want us to toe the line here? And so if you're OK, like what do people wrestle with through your eyes? That's what I see. And then how do you suggest maybe they consider building their own brand or their story? Right. Well, you know, let me start with the kind of surface um, change that we you know, I've seen in my professional career. And, you know, it used to not be a good thing when you had a side hustle. Now everyone seems to have a side hustle. It used to be not a good thing when you even worked at home or you had employees. Like I had one 1099 in my tech company and it was all employees. Now the norm is all 1099s. So I guess, you know, first of all, I think we have to even, you know, people like us that have been in the, in, have had a professional career for a number of years, have to really, you know, be very nimble in our mindset and how we look at things. And um, I'm IBM trained. So I have that big blue management of business, you know, ingrained in me. And I think in a lot of ways, that's great. And it's helped me with success, but it needs to be tested and stretched. And like I said, be nimble and flexible. So, you know, first of all, you have to get over yourself maybe is one of the things of, you know, let's just, let's just start building your story and see how that goes. So number one, that first step. But secondly, you know, I've been saying for the last few years as I've been marketing this publishing company, it's the age of content you need to get. And I'm sure you say this, you got to get your content out there because someone else is going to get it out there for you. And it's probably not right. So number one, but you know what? I've sort of changed that. I've, I haven't disregarded that, but I've started now to say, this is not just the age of content. This is the age where we all have found our voice. Mm. In 10 years from now, right? When you look at, we've all found our voice in different ways, in different formats and that. So you've found your voice. So now publish it, write it. Just, just you know, you don't, you for sure won't be a part of what's going on if you don't speak your voice, if you don't let your voice come through. So Lisa, you know, I think a lot of people, believe it or not, tell me in confidence, they don't know what to say. They, they, they In other words, they haven't found their voice outside of the corporate kind of yeah. suit and they wrestle with how to find that. And, and, you know, whether it's written, which I know you folks do a great job, you know, through our channels, you know, we showcase people through video. Uh, we call it personal branding is the, you know, the buzzword. But how would you suggest people find their voice? Because I think people wrestle with like, what's the first few strides to go to the blocks and then build on that? So what you're talking about is, is the first step that we take with our clients. So once a client comes on and says, okay, you know, I do want to publish an ebook. And we start that we do something at the very beginning, the very first meeting, we ask for about two and a half to three hours with our client. And we get them in a room with our team and it's called a mind map book build. And it is truly a mind map because it's that, you know, 
what's the most important piece of advice you've learned might be a question. You know, who is it at the end of the day? And we, we ask our clients, close your eyes. And 10 years from now, you got your book. What do, what do you see you doing with it? You know, they might say, I want to be having it, give it to elementary school teachers or something. So it really is that mind map where we put everything on the wall and then our expert editors, and this is the skill set I don't have, but our expert editor in chief or content editor is going to just start digging deeper to really start, you know, peeling the onion and really get to that unique story. And like we said, and, and we hear it all the time, it's a catchphrase, everyone has a story, but we all do, because we're all unique human beings. And even though we might have gone through the same thing as other people in the instant, in the same instant, we perceive it 100% different, right? Absolutely. Because of who we are. And so it, it really is about about that person just saying, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and be vulnerable. I'm going to go ahead and share things um, that maybe I've never shared before. And in fact, we had a podcast uh, before, right around COVID that was named um, What No One Knows. Mm -hmm. And it was because I had so many clients that would have conversations with me to say, you know what, I'm going to tell you something that no one knows. And, and that's, what the, that's where the heart of everyone's story is. Well, you know, it's funny. I always joke that if you want someone to read or watch something, just put confidential on it and they'll go for it right away. So <laughs> I'm, right. I'm, uh, I'm eating your dog food, as we say. Um, yeah. So, uh, um, okay. So, so I'm an executive. I'm watching right now and I'm saying, Hey, uh, sounds great. Find my voice. Um, what, what are there common questions that you ask people to, to kind of force the, you know, the toothpaste out of the tube per se, because I think again, they're wrestling with how much do I show like my family? Do I'm into that? Like, cause we talk a lot about like the celebrity president on this marketing show. We think the leaders exactly what you preach, right? The leaders got to get out there, especially and be visible and vulnerable and show more than just the, the, the front picture of the suit on. Right. But are there specific questions that you would ask someone to lead them to build their story? Well, we do. And actually, um, it came to mind. So I have a 17-year-old that went for a job interview a couple days ago. And they said to her, the, the director guy said, you know what? I've never hired a high schooler before, but someone helped me in my life. I'm going to hire you. And I just, you know, even though it's so basic and yes, we have coaches, a lot of coaches these days and mentors and all of that, we would ask that question of, of this executive, you know, what is it? How can you tell something that helps someone else? How can you pay it forward? You know, really, right? I mean, there's so much bad in this world and not to, you know, get on that thing, but there's so much bad. How can you contribute to the good in this world? Mm -hmm. How can you give a leg up? What is it that you learned the hard way that you don't want someone else to learn? You know, how can you, how can you give someone discipline? I, I believe discipline is one of the top qualities of a successful C-level or professional period, right? It's discipline, right? Mm -hmm. And how can you share, how did you get that trait of discipline? So we really, you know, with those answers, and usually when someone opens up on something like that, my first, you know, my first coach said this to me, and I never forgot it. You know, many athletes have that story, right? Or mm -hmm. my first music teacher believed in me or something. It really is about that. I don't want to be else. I'm a sappy for some reason. I didn't have enough coffee this morning, but I don't, <laughs> you know, it, it really is about, it really is about that heart, which mm -hmm. I brought up now twice, but really it's about that. We all go to work. It's not vacation, right? It's work. We go there because we're paid for it. We all do our best. We all want to do the best for our company. We all want to strive to the highest professional levels. But when we come home and we're just relaxing, we just might want to also be kind and giving and, and share our wisdom. Really what you're saying is, is, is drawing from their hard experiences in life or their good experiences and turning them into the good. And then how can you propel somebody else forward with that? So exactly being vulnerable, being authentic. I find a lot of executives, they, they have a hard time seeing themselves from the outside, yeah. meaning they don't, they don't think that their God-given talents or whatever it is they do are of interest to other people. And I, I tell executives, the sooner we start to see you as a product, almost, if I could call it that, so we start to describe you and you express kind of what your voice is and... Um, 
But I, I just think that uh, we're getting more and more demand right now, executives coming to us confidentially, by the way, and going, hey, I realize I got to build my personal brand, whether it's through written book, through you folks or video or whatever, mm -hmm. because they're realizing that if I'm, a, if I'm a buyer and we're in the B2B sector and I'm going to look at these different executives, and, I, and by the way, the leadership pages on the websites, we, we manage or touch 150 websites a month right now. The top pages are often in top five every time leadership. And in a recruiting era right now, as the person, the millennial, Gen Z, baby boomer looking around is looking for who the leader is of that company. Yes. And if I looked at five companies and one dude had a lady that was talking, you know, uh, about what she does and a little more transparent. I'd, I'd have to think you'd gravitate or consider that company as long as it was, you know, respectable, professional, all those right. good things. You're not talking about, you know, things that could put you on the edge. But you're exactly right. And I mean, all of us have heard people do business with people. Right. Yes. We've all heard that. Yes. We all know yes. that. Well, it is 100 percent true. You know, like you said. So um, we just were. I'm also a, a president of a nonprofit. And I'll tell you, the video of the founder, Earl Sands, got me. And he yeah. told me, you know, and like it is, and, and it's true. And I've always known that, you know, my clients will say that they're, they, I either sold them because of who I was and talking with me, or they stay with us because of me, Lisa Marie Garcia. So like I said, you know, in the, you know, in past years, you know, 20 years ago, it wasn't, it, we didn't have our voice. It wasn't so content out there. It is now. So you need to put your voice forward. And, and, and to be honest, you know, sometimes it's a journey with some of our clients that come with the, with the viewpoint of, look, I'm going to write my business book. I'm going to write my brand book, but I'm not going to get too personal. I want to keep them separate. I hear that quite a bit. And what, and then that's a process though, as they dig, as we ask them to dig a little bit deeper until they become more comfortable with it. And also, and actually many times it's therapeutic for the person um, it becomes a whole different situation than what they thought of. It's therapeutic for them to relive that. Yeah. Um, and, and again, and understand that, you know, you know, you know, cyberbullying is something that is out there. So mm -hmm. honestly, the way I look at the whole being vulnerable thing, what's the worst case? You have some person that doesn't even know you, that judges you, that you don't care. You look at it for 10 seconds and you forget about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm all, you know, it's always approach it. What's the worst case? So we just help our clients look at, you know, really what is the, the fantastic advantage of being yeah. who you are and sharing mm -hmm. and, and letting people know who you are in this world. I, I know uh, what I like about what you folks do in writing, helping somebody write their own book is you know, I can tell you as a speaker, a lot of times they go, oh, that guy or that lady's written a book. Now, I still got mine in a word <laughs> format here with a lots of red ink because it's never perfect enough. And I'm sure you face people in my situation, right? <laughs> oh, it's got to be perfect. And meanwhile, my writer's saying, just get it out there. But right. whatever, what I like about books is that it positions you with credibility. And I think there's, for some reason, uh, books have tremendous weight and i really that's what i like what you're doing mm -hmm. and what you know we're trying to do which is complimentary to you is just whether it's through the written word or video or social media get them away from just sharing the corporate stuff that so many feel like it's 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 not them and uh so i would just encourage people you know it was, it was 2017 I had a cold drink in my hand and I said, you know, I'm going to commit to LinkedIn because that's a platform. If I'm going to coach people on digital sales and marketing, how can I hide behind a, you know, and that's why I think you're out there too, Lisa, uh, Melissa too. We're doing a lot of stuff with great stuff. I congratulate Melissa, by the way, but um, I just wanted to have you on today because I wanted to give people a shot in the rear end to say, look, if you're not, you know, thinking about what you're doing for your story, mm -hmm. I think you're missing it. When I started in sales, it was all about the company I work for and the product. And now I think this thing's coming around back to it's all about you and then the product and then the company. But Absolutely. somewhere in there, there's a happy medium. So, hey, listen, if somebody was uh, said, hey, maybe I need to write my book. Um, I've got some ideas. I have no idea how to put this thing together. Uh, what would they, how would they get in touch with you? Well, first of all, um, let me tell you, Rick, 
you need to start. Do you need to stop editing? I've had people come and say, I've been working on a book for 30 years. So Lisa's not there. So Rick, this is for you also. I think you just um, got a shot. <laughs> I'm telling you, no, we, we, I love to take, we call them discovery, you know, calls, right. And zooms and just hear what your story is and tell you and tell people about us. But there you see. Yeah, see, see. And this stop is, this editing. is, this is my actually, world right here. All there ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. And your world needs to be this. Well, see how yeah. it works. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, but yeah, so our, our website is published with now.com, published with now, N O W. Uh, there's a great story that I'll tell you later about what, how now came to be, but um, also our hashtag is now publishing. So if you want to see what we do, and from the beginning, we, we built the book from the ground up for clients. So, yes, we're a traditional publisher, we are so far away from self publishing. It's not funny, but we built, can build a book from the ground up, but we always knew from day one that after your friends and family buy, you've got to be promoting it, promoting it as well. So we include all of that, but we love what, I love my job. I get to read about and learn about some great people in this world that have great stories to share. Hey, uh, I, I, I apologize. We don't have time to ask you one of your books that you wrote is, you know, never drink coffee. It, yeah. In a business meeting, right? I think that's got to be a good one. And just to close it out, you opened up by saying, hey, you've been in business five and a half years. You're at a startup mode. Can I just wave a warning flag? Like we're uh, closing in on 20 plus years, we're 20, almost 25 years. And you are never at a startup mode, especially well, yeah. with what's, <laughs> true, especially true, what's true. changing today. And you're sitting on such a hot topic right now uh, to help people tell their story. Anyway, I just want to say congratulations. I love what you do online. And thanks so much for joining us today on This Marketing Show. Thanks, Thank Lisa. you, Melissa and Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Take Thanks care. Thank you publishing. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Smarketing Show. If you enjoyed today's show, please like, share, and subscribe to get the latest B2B insights to help you market and sell to win.